Good afternoon to my fellow engineers. Today we're going to be looking at um, Solid Edge uh, animations. So basically, it will be looking at um, make you know using the assemblies that we've made or, or using the assembly that I've gone ahead and made, um, and we're going to be applying some motion to it. So we're going to be making parts move inside the assembly. And the way that we the reason that we're doing that is because it allows us if you've got something like a car or something um, like a, a missile you can you can plot how it's actually going to move and how it's going to interact with parts you can also do simulations on the animation so if parts will buckle under certain loads but we're not going to be looking at that um, looking at that just yet we'll be looking at animations and motions and we'll effectively be making a short video um, based on uh, a, a part that we've made so as I said, the way that we do this is we're going to be doing it in our, in our, in our assembly. So we're just going to open up a, an assembly here. And we're going to create a new assembly. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've made some um, parts for uh, sort of like a piston crankshaft sort of idea uh, just along here. Um, and I'm going to be introducing these. And I'm going to show you in what way we need to align them for the motion to work effectively. Okay. So um, obviously, this 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 sort of logic will apply to uh, almost anything. You can move almost anything in uh, Solid Edge, but it always works to do with the relationships made in the assembly. Now you may remember from um, the intermediate pack and the basics pack that when we looked at the assemblies, you always had to make relationships, and it's very important that you get the right relationships. Um, you know that, that you're plotting the right relationships in this environment because you don't want to constrain the motion, you don't want the motion to effectively uh, not be feasible. So the first thing that you want to introduce is something that is going to not be moving at any time. So if you're designing, um, uh, for example, if you're designing a plane and uh, the, width, the flaps on the plane are the thing that's moving, but the plane itself is staying still, you say that the plane itself is the fixed point okay and that would therefore be the thing that you introduce first of all okay so um uh, my uh my my, my the, the, the part that i'm that isn't moving at all i can say it's not moving at all is the standing rod so i'll bring the standing rod into the environment okay and now everything will be made in reference to the standing pole so nothing else um the standing rod won't be moving at all okay so as you can see here, there's um, room for a shaft to go down here, and something's going to be connecting up here as well. Okay. So the thing that goes down into here is the lower shaft. So we'll introduce that. Okay, and now because we've introduced our, our first movable part, we have to define the relationships. So the first obvious relationship is that well, this cylinder needs to interact in some way with this with the standing pod. And that interacts in this way. Okay. So at the minute, what that first relationship says that the center line of this l stays in line with the center line of this one, i.e., um, it, it it it's um, always in line in in a sense. But it can still move in the y direction because we haven't aligned it in the y direction at all, and it can still rotate around because. If we rotate it around, well, the axes, the, you know, they're still coaxial sort of thing. And if we move it back and forth, they're still coaxial. So if we make our second relationship that this edge has to be in line with this edge at all times, now this part, this shaft, can not move back and forth at all, because otherwise it would defy this relationship, the fact that it has to be in line with this edge. And it can't move left or right, you know, um, linearly or, or in any fashion because, because therefore it wouldn't be coaxial. But it can still rotate around, okay? And we want this to rotate around because this is going to be a rotating shaft. Now, in reality, you'd probably put a bearing in there or something like the like. But we're just going to heavily lubricate this and make this nice and soft, nice and smooth so that we don't have to include bearings just yet. So obviously, this lower shaft is going to rotate around in accordance to this. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to put is we're going to, there's there's something that we're going to be putting in here, and that's the middle connector. 
Now this is kind of like a um it's a it's a middle connector in this part when this shaft rotates around this middle connector along this area is also going to rotate around so we'll go with the same logic as before obviously we want that section to be coaxial with this section like so that's our first relationship the second relationship is obviously we want this plane to be in permanent contact with this plane but we also need to do, introduce a new relationship that, because at the minute, as I said, the shaft can turn around inside there, but additionally, this component, this um, middle connector, can rotate around the shaft as of yet. And there is obviously this, as you can see, this little ridge inside the um, inside the shaft, and there's also, I don't know if you can see it very well, there's this little locking system here. Uh, effectively like a, a keyway that allows for the shaft to rotate trans, uh, to, you know, to rotate torque and rotational movement to this section here. So we can introduce that to that plane. And now, in accordance with this um, shaft, this device here, this device here is going to be constantly in line and rotate along with this shaft. Okay. Now the next part to be introduced, I've just I've just added some colours in these by the way so that so it's easier to see. So um, the next part that we're going to introduce is going to be the shaft that goes up here and I've called that the upper shaft. Now as you can see there's no keyway on the inside of this so it's not the keyway section, it's the plane section. Which means that therefore this shaft will be able to rotate. So this shaft will be able to rotate as this rotates and therefore that allows this keyway section to constantly face upwards even though this is rotating. Okay, we're also going to introduce a brace here. Now this is basically, this just um, uh, enables um, some torque to be transmitted using this keyway here. So we'll add that into it. And obviously, it's because because there is a keyway, we have to make a relationship that allows for the keyway. So now, as this well, first of all, this connector rod will not move at all. This lower shaft will rotate around. As this rotates in the in one direction, the the uh, middle section here will rotate in the same direction with the same speed on the inside and the fastest speed, obviously, on the outside because of because of an increased radius. This connector rod is fixed to this shaft which can rotate in this middle section and you'll, you'll see why that's that's done in just a sec. Okay, I've added this uh, connector to be plugged into there and the reason I've done that is just because in practice if we wanted to take this apart or anything it would be a little bit easier. So we'll make two whole relationships to make sure that it's constantly in line and we have to align that plane to this plane okay so now as you can see this is in line with this one simply because of the relationship that we've made and this can uh, this 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 section up here as it were can stay perfectly flat with respect to the XY plane even though this bar is rotating and everything's moving around because as I said, this shaft can rotate inside this middle section. Okay, the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to add um, the parts that allow us to connect this section up here to this section down here using uh, via a piston. And I've just called that the, uh, not that, the translating rod there. So I'll introduce our first one. And that needs to be able to rotate, so we won't make any more relationships there. And then this one needs to go onto this one. But of course it doesn't need to rotate. So because they both need to rotate, we haven't made any more any additional relationships. 
Now I'm just going to rotate this one around to make it a little bit easier to to um, make a relationship in future. Just using the um, steering wheel there. Doesn't need to be perfect because it'll be um, it'll uh, perfect itself on the next relationship. And now I'm going to connect the uh, lower cylinder and upper cylinder for this piston. Okay, and obviously we need these pist this piston to go inside this piston, so they need to be coaxial. Okay, so what you've just seen, first of all, I know that we have to rotate this around, we'll just rotate this around in just a sec. What you've just seen, you saw this section here rotate a little bit to allow for it to um, connect easily. That's fine, um, because as I said, it's this part that we care about being fixed. Everything else is completely free to rotate based on this um, the relationships that we've made. As I said, we just need to rotate this around um, and the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to use the steering wheel. Put it on that axis. And rotate it around by 180 degrees. Okay, so now it's pointing upwards. Okay, so at the minute um, all of these parts are in their required relationships and we're going to be rotating this cylinder around here. So the way that we introduce a, um, a, a motion is it's defined by motors. So you can have a rotational motor or you can have a linear motor. So if you had um, if you had a bicycle and you had a wheel on the bicycle and you um, ran your finger around the wheel so that it rotated, that would be a rotational motion. If you pushed a box along a desk, that would be a linear motion. And obviously, because we're controlling this shaft to go round, we're using a rotational motion. So you click, select what you want to rotate, so it's going to be this shaft. And then you select which direction. Uh, so it's saying, right, this dotted line is saying, right, I found an axis that we can rotate around. Do you want to rotate clockwise or anticlockwise? Um, set our parameters, so 120 degrees a second, which means it will rotate um, once every three seconds. And then we finish that. So we've only introduced one motor, but because of all the relationships, everything should work, unless I've missed something, of course. And the way that we're going to just simulate that is where we were at motors up here, where we've got rotational and linear motors just up here. We're going to go to simulate the motor. Introduce our motors, so we've got only one motor, the rotational motor. And we're not going to change anything just yet, we're just going to run that. So what I've done here, as you can see, I'll just put it back to the beginning, is this shaft rotates and it allows everything to be pulled around. Now, these shafts aren't quite long enough. You'll just see in a sec when we get to the bottom. These shafts aren't quite long enough, so one actually comes out of the other one. But because the only relationship is that they have to be coaxial, they are actually perfectly still in line, and which is why they will go back together again. Now the way that we would solve that is obviously we'd make this shaft longer by say 30 millimeters, and that way we could actually make both of these shafts longer by 30 millimeters, connecting the gap over by about 60 millimeters. But I've left it like this so that you can see that there is a gap, and yet it will still go back inside perfectly. So if I just go back to the beginning and redefine the properties of the motor and we'll make this 30 seconds just so that you I can explain it a little bit longer. So as you can see, this lower part is rotating constantly, and that's the only part that we've rotated. It's the only motor in this entire system. But because of these relationships, 
as you can see, this lower shaft is rotating because other, because it must be rotating because this flat plane is starting on the top and then it's going on the bottom and so forth. This section is rotating because it's allowing the uh, shaft, this cylinder, to face upwards at all times. Same with up here. So that's just a very simple way that you can make rotational motors. Okay. Um, that's going to be all from me today, so I'll see you in the next video.